The Python window integrates into R Pro and is used where you code your scripts using RPy. RPy is the library native to Esri and is built on Python. You can see the Python window in the screen here. If you don't have yours open yet, simply go to View and you'll see it's one of your panes. So you simply just open the Python window. You can dock it in your screen as well. So I have already docked mine at the bottom here or I can have it float. It really is entirely up to you with how you would like to view it. You can do pretty much all these tools and methods that you can do using the GUI of Esri in the Python window using RPy. But you can't do everything. So for example, creating a map is to be done in Pro and not in the Python window. Once your Python window is open, the first thing you do is you import the library. So you import RPy. This just tells the software that you're going to be using that particular library of Python. And then once you've done that, you can call up multiple aspects of RPy. As you can see in the screen, the window allows you to auto-complete or it auto-completes terms for you. It also allows you to select from options. So for example, I said ArcPy full stop. Now I would like to access the various capabilities that are within ArcPy. And you can see all the various tools and methods that come up. Now the tools of ArcPy, the code, is organized into the toolboxes that you have in your geoprocessing tab. So for example, the data management toolbox, it's called management. And you can see here, it's red like this. So you just navigate up to it and you use your tab, call it up. And here then you can access all kinds of tools that you would have in this toolbox. So for example, if I would like to create a feature class, I would just type create and everything that says create that is accessible within this toolbox would now come up. So if I would like to create a table, for example, I can do this now. Once I've done this, the window will give you the options or what you have to put in the commands. So for example here, if I want to create a table, I'd have to say where it's stored. I have to give it a name. And then everything in the cursive brackets is an optional parameter. That means you don't actually have to put anything into those fields. So for example here, if I would like to create a table and let's say now I want to store this table in my ArcPy folder. I can just drag it in like that and it will populate it for you and then you'd have to give it a name. Now a name is a text file so be sure to enclose your text in the enclosing um, quotation marks and for example you will call, call it a test, a test table file and once you run that tool you'll be able to see the table created in your ArcPy folder. To execute the tool, you just press enter and the command will now run. Once it has run successfully, you'll get this result. For example, here it tells me where the table is now stored. It's added to your map as well, which you can now edit and manipulate. And if you go to your folder that I said, there it is stored now. The ArcPy window, therefore, allows you to interactively code. You don't have to be expert at this because it does the autocomplete option for you. So by typing and calling up additional aspects, um, you can then access the tools. If you don't know what the code is for a specific tool, you can simply go to your toolboxes. So for example, what if I want to project a file? We'll locate the tool. So we know this is how it looks when we just use the tool itself. But you can also actually drag and drop the commands into your window. For example, there. So arcpymanagement.project. And again, it tells you you have to have an in data set, an out data set, and a coordinate system. Now, sometimes it's easier to code using variables. So, for example, a spatial reference or when you do projections, the projection information that you're going to use. 
it's better saved in a variable. So for example, you will save my projection information in a projection variable. The reason for this is when you project, we will be using coordinate systems, right? And we can select multiples. All of these are named in a specific way and have various parameters to them. Now, there are lots of definitions here. So, for example, if you want to have a look at what these definitions are, you can see here, so it's got a geographic coordinate system, then it has a datum, it's got a sphere that you have to define, the prime meridian, the unit, and so forth. If you start coding and you want to give this projection information, you have to actually code exactly like that, so it can be quite complex. So a different way of doing this is using the WKID or the ESPG number. Now, this can be quite easily found by a search on the internet. For example here, I've searched for WKID for WGS84 and you can see the spatial reference, the EPSG number here is 4326. Now this is the value that you can use when creating your projection information. You do this using the create spatial reference tool. All right, so the spatial reference would then be this WKID number. So having stored my projection information in a variable, I can now use this in subsequent analysis. So let's go back to projection. So if I would like to project any particular file, and now I will have to have an input data set. So for example, from practical one, we'll use the geology layer just as an example here. So I can just drag it in. And then I say comma because now I'm going into the second aspect of where I want to, or of my code. So this is the out data set. So here, for example, I'll use that same folder again. So I'm going to say my out data set here. And of course, I need to give it a specific name. Right? So I'll say, for example, geology projects. And because it's not in a geodatabase, you'll have to specify it as a shapefile. And by saying comma again, you are now going to the input of the coordinate system. So here you can use your variable that you created before. And then as you can see in your commands that you see on your screen, that the rest are all optional. So you can ignore those. And then you just run the tool. So here I'm using a variable inside code. I could have also just used this create spatial reference as a nested function within that projection information. Now a nice thing about the Python window is that if you do make a mistake you can actually reuse your code so by just going up and down using the up and down arrows you can actually reuse code. So for example if I wanted to use that nested function that I had just now and I wanted to actually not use the variable but now I actually just want to use the other code, the ARPA management special reference I can just use the arrows as you see me do now and I can run it again without having to retype all my code. So the Python window also allows you to reuse code. You can copy and paste into it. You can see here that my second file has now also run. I've got two projection information files there now. One was run using a, a nested function where I actually code the entirety of it and the other one just used a variable. You can also when you right click in the window you can load previous code into it or you can clear the window or you can save it to a separate file for later use. You can right click your code and select it all for example and then copy it into a separate document or you can save the transcript. This allows you to save it as a Python file that you can then open later on again or you can simply just clear the code. If you run your code and you want to re revisit it later on you can just simply, what I showed you now, where I copied my code, I can just paste everything back into my window there, as you can see. If I do this, you have to clean up your code slightly. Now, the results, for example, shouldn't be part of your code because those can't be executed, of course. That's just uh, information. So I would now like to select everything and then clear the window to give me a clean Python window to work with. The reason for this is the code that I showed you previously had no descriptive information on it. 
you should always annotate your code with metadata. You do this using the hash size. For example, I could would say code for track three. This isn't executed by the Python window. It's just text for you for later use. And I can say the author is C. Hansen and then today's dates, for example. So when I revisit this code for later, I have information on here, for example, the purpose. I know this is for pack three, so I have some context that I can use. It's also important that you set your environmental settings. So for example, um, the environmental settings are you can set a projection for the entirety of your map projects, or you can ensure that your outputs are overwritten. So when you run a tool, if you make a mistake, you can run it again with the feature class having the same name. To access those, you have to access your RPI environmental settings. For example, override outputs here yeah, is a Boolean value, and you must set it to true if it's, a, if it's going to hold true in your map project. This particular tool is part of the environmental class, RPI's ENV class. For example, adding outputs to maps ensures that every tool that you run, that the subsequent output is actually added to your interface. And you've got additional parameters here. So that's the one I was just talking about. And then you've got the override output as well, which is a bit further down on the page. Esri has a comprehensive help documentation available in terms of RPI. So if you ever are confused, this is one of the ways of accessing these, for example, the data access module, the spatial analyst module, the network analyst module are all that are quite common. For example, spatial analyst has things like slope and distance and the interpolation aspects of it. So for example, if you look at the surface here, you've got aspects. So it'll explain to you how to do it. And here's the code for Python. So aspect, the in raster, the method, set unit, and so forth, which will create a rest, an aspect surface. Different to this, of course, is that if you don't have access to this, if you don't know what the tool is called, you can just search for it in your geoprocessing tab, and then you just drag it in, like I showed you before. Another important aspect of the Python window is that you can also use the model. If you export the model, you can export it to a Python script, which actually shows you how the tools can be run. A model sits in a toolbox, so for example here. This is by default created when you create an ArcPro project. So you just right-click the toolbox and you can say model. And then in here, for example, if I do the project again, just to illustrate, I can drag the tool in and example I would like to project the one file here so it's geology projects and let's say I want to project it back down to how to be a stick, which is the local datum for us here this can then be exported to a Python script to do this you just tap click on the model builder tab and you say export so you can export it to a Python file. Now this would be just like a, you can open with a notepad, for example, or you can send it to the Python window. And here you can actually see how the code is run. So if you're unsure about something, the model builder is actually quite a good way of accessing the code. So for example, here you can see, this is now would be a standalone script. You import RPI, you would define the model. You hear the override outputs are set to false. Generally, you should set these to true because then you can repeat steps. Now you're going to create a workspace, a scratch workspace, which is the file here. So this is your, for example, your default to your database. The workspace is for where you're actually going to be working from, which you set as well. And then you're going to do the projection. So when you use the model builder, it uses a lot of variables when it runs the code. So it can sometimes be difficult to read, but if you are unsure of something, then the model builder is quite a good method to do this. And because it's now in the Python window, you can just say enter and it will run the script for you. So now this geolo geology project will be projected into the HTTPS took um, geographic coordinate system. And another important concept for coding is that you will revisit files 
so a neural visit project. So the variables or the, the metadata information is important. Use variables where you can and use the tools at your disposal. So drag and drop from the geoprocessing toolboxes in. If you're unsure about the syntax, if you're not sure, use the model builder and then use the very extensive help files that Esri has available for you when you code.